Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because they added this uh, 1970 bonds flowing in the 1972 scene in Gull, mostly mellow. Oh, other positive signs. And Juno Beach still doesn't have electricity, which protects us, protects our solitude. Mm -hmm. No drug bus whatsoever. And, well, the immigration cops do a kind of a token uh, raid about every six months, but uh, <laughs> we just kind of go hide in the remote palm groves until they have done their work for that half year. Yeah. Um, no gawking tourists, uh, no voyeur males uh, strolling the beach in their straight clothes and black leather shoes, trying to find naked Ibby tricks too. <laughs> you know. We're, this is way before any of that came down. Mm -hmm. This is the peak year. This is the golden year in Goa hippie history, 71, 72. Well, uh, whoop. Back at Eddie's place, huh? Flip out theater. Mm hmm. Cindy whispers to Eddie, Valerie oh, is talking wearily to herself. I'm afraid she's going to jump down into the well. Eddie walks over, invites his shock to They've been together for some years now. Oh. Look, Valerie, come on back to the uh, ruins because we've got a great guitar player coming over, visiting. You know, uh, and he takes her by the arm to lead her back. Uh, but Valerie frees herself from Eddie's grasp, a jerk, uh, jerk, jerks her arm away. And Eddie recalls this exact moment as uh, she reveals to him his mistake that he's been making all these years. Well, what is that? Eddie explains at dinner with his tribe in the ruins, uh, his famous Last Supper speech. Here's what he says. Uh, you know what, uh, the eight-finger Eddie uh, that you used to know is no more. I mean, it's still here, but I am no longer listening to your uh, problems. Even in your dreams, uh, you must solve your own problems. Mm -hmm. I can't solve them for you. Uh, you know, the mistake I've been making on, you know, it's my mistake. I've assumed since, you know, I move around so much, uh, you know, I'll go up to Benares, Kathmandu, and so on, that it would shake up the scene. Uh, but that didn't happen, and I, I've realized how many of you have become absolutely dependent on me. Um, I've been very mistaken. So from this moment on, you're on your own. Well, Philip Manusi remembers the moment. Uh, he says, uh, this is from the book, uh, A Season in Heaven, you got to get it, by David Tomary, perfect companion book to the hippie history of the long cap man do, yeah. Well, uh, from the quote from that book is, people often hide behind their beliefs, their quests and uh, trips, but people like Eddie uh, are just completely himself. Very rare. Mm -hmm. Self-realized man. Not a guru. And when Eddie, uh, you know, realized that the girl trip was being projected on him, that's when he withdrew from his uh, kind of yoga of cooking and feeding people. Yeah. Well, uh, Valerie performed her uh, role as a, a cosmic Shakti, in this case, Kali, and shocked Eddie into his egoless enlightenment at the well. Well, uh, this grand declaration of not cooking food anymore uh, and that everyone must solve their own problems 
is a master stroke. <laughs> I mean, the proof of that is Chris and Valerie have been fighting over Eddie's body while he's trying to sleep. Well, now they move out and get their own house so they can spat independently, you know, and uh, get away from Eddie's body and especially Johanna and her death wish tree. <laughs> yeah, they uh, rent a little house behind Joe Bananas and, uh, well, uh, the Eddie doctrine is born, the new, the new way, and freedom is in the air. <laughs> uh, Eddie wraps up this final interview. And Joe Bananas by confirming, yeah, Earthman, I stopped uh, cooking food in the ruins uh, in the winter, uh, 1972, and I did not make my place a haven for hippies anymore. He smiles benignly. When I think back about the old days, uh, the most mysterious uh, effect uh, came down in that I realized whether I cooked only for myself over a month or fed a hundred uh, hippies, that my grocery bill always came out the same. <laughs> wow. Gold and precious interview. Because my reflections on Eddie must stop here. When Eddie stops cooking, and there's freedom in the air. Yeah. Well, his fruit salad to go is placed beside the table by uh, the wife of Tony Banana, wonderful woman. And Eddie, he's an old man, and he must be careful uh, just getting into his flip-flops. He focuses downward, uh, scoots his feet in them. Mm -hmm. And then he glances at me nonchalantly and uh, says... Uh, have you talked to Francis yet? Francis? Who's Francis? Oh, uh, Eddie says, you know, the gone guy that rented me the first house in Anjuna Beach in 1969. And the phrase, first house on Andrew, <laughs> just releases uh, a flood of images and memories. And oh, my poor memory runners, yeah, they get their track shoes drenched, bringing back all these treasured memories. Let me tell you about a few of those. First house in Goa. <laughs> <laughs> 